This is a mine shaft that does not exist. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own using 100% free 3D software called Blender. Along the way, you'll learn three simple techniques that can be used to create water slides, asteroids, and snowy mountains. So before we take the ride ourselves, let's buckle in and learn some 3D. The first technique we'll learn about is curves. A curve object is a type of object that by itself doesn't actually appear in the final render until you give it geometry. One way to do that is by going to geometry, round, and increasing the thickness, which makes this kind of look like a noodle. And if you control right click around, it's exactly that. Model a bowl around it and you got ramen. Anytime you're watching a movie and you see a rope or a power line, you can pretty much guarantee that the artist just added a curve and gave it some thickness. And if you want some more complex rope, you could create a new curve object, form it into a different shape, then on the previous curve, change it from round to object and assign your new curve. Now, if you twist these handles, we've got a Twizzler. Or you could make a shape of three circles and now it's an intertwined rope. But what if you need something really detailed, like say a railroad track? For that, you need to use curve deformation. First, model anything you want. In this case, I started with a plane, added some cuts, shaped it, extruded it, and then added an array modifier to make those segments repeat, and finally check merge so they're joined. Then after that, add a curve modifier and select the curve object. Now our rail will bend to the exact shape of the curve. And if we set the array amount to fit the curve, it'll now infinitely generate as we add new points. Now, since we need two rails, go into edit mode, move our rail to one side of the origin point, then add a mirror modifier and place it before the array. And now we need wooden planks to tie the rail together. And thankfully, we can copy everything we did. Just shift select the rail, press Control L, copy modifiers. We don't need the mirror modifier, but we do need to increase this array distance. And now we have staggered wooden planks tying our rail together. And we can repeat this same process to make support beams that appear intermittently along the track. And then of course, the mine shaft, which is copied in the exact same process. Curve deformations are a surprisingly useful technique that can be used to create water slides, roller coasters, or even Christmas lights. But if you think that's cool, wait until you see we combine it with our next technique, displacements. Displacement just means pushing or pulling the vertices from a starting position according to values. And those values are defined by a texture. So a lighter value will push the points out and a darker value will pull them in. What this means is you can use any texture to add free detail to a surface. And one of the first commercial uses for this technique was a bug's life, where it was used extensively on the pebbled ground surface. All the artist did here was make a simple smooth surface, then apply a pebble texture to make the pebbles pop out of the ground. There's two ways to add displacement in Blender and we're actually gonna use both. First, add a displacement modifier, then click new. Now click on textures and then from the drop down, we can choose the type of texture to apply. Let's start with clouds and set the type to Veroni. And since it can only work with the amount of vertices in the mesh, we also need to add a subsurf modifier positioned just after the curve modifier. Then back at the texture, increase the scale value to get something that looks like a lumpy cave. Now, if we increase the detail, you can see we're getting more shapes, but it doesn't look realistic. And that's because this texture that we're using is procedural. And procedural textures are powerful, but they're typically used in conjunction with image textures. So we need to use this with an image texture, but not just any image texture. Because remember that displacement will push or pull the rock out of the surface according to the light or dark parts of the image. So what we need is a special type of texture used exclusively for 3D called PBR textures. A PBR texture is created using specialized equipment to accurately capture height, color, glossiness, and all other properties of a surface. 
This gives us not just accurate displacement, but a full one-to-one -one representation of any surface. PBR textures are so useful that they're used in just about every VFX shot, animation, and AAA game today. You can get PBR textures from my website, Polygon, which I created because I wanted high quality PBR textures that tile really well. Polygon also has free plugins for Blender, Max, C4D, and SketchUp, which lets you download and import the materials in one click, making 3D almost as easy as playing a game. Just log into the plugin, browse for a texture, click download, and import it in one click. And if you sign up through the link in the description, I will give you my Blender Guru discount. So I found this rock texture that I like and I've hit import. And because we don't want to UV unwrap it, in the bottom left corner, change the mapping type to cube, then set bump to displacement and bump. And finally, in the shader tab, connect it to object coordinates to match the curve. And now, thanks to the power of displacement, we finally have a realistic mine shaft. Procedural texture adds that first large scale detail and then PBR textures add the smaller details, which together create a surprisingly realistic effect. This is the exact process that can be used to convert a simple cube into an asteroid. And if you think that's cool, wait until you see it combined with our next technique, masking. So the walls of our mineshaft are jagged rock, but the floor needs to be gravel. Now, a lazy way to do this would be to just select the floor, add a new material, apply it to the floor, and slap on a texture. But you can see this creates a sharp, ugly separation line. So what we need instead is a mask. In its simplest form, a mask just defines which parts will receive material A and which parts will receive material B. And this is all done in your shader nodes. So if you have two shaders like this, you can combine them with a mix shader. Now, if we set this value to zero, we're getting all of shader A. If we set it to one, we're getting all of shader B. But if we add a black and white texture into that input, it's now acting as a mask between the two. A mask is one of the most versatile techniques of 3D, and it's used constantly in movies and games to create variations across surfaces. For example, you could blend between dirt and leaves to paint a dirt pathway weaving through the woods. But a mask doesn't just have to be an image texture, it could be any property of a mesh used by the 3D software. So for example, if you have a landscape, you could add in a geometry node, take the normal data, separate it out so the faces are pointing upwards, and then feed that through a color ramp node fed into the mix shader. And now I've got a slider that decides how much snow is built up on my mountain. Masking is an extremely versatile skill, and we're gonna use it for our floor using vertex painting. In this mode, I can paint white directly onto these vertices of my mesh slice to mask out that area. Now, by default, Blender will save this as a color attribute simply called attribute, but I'm gonna rename it floor. Now, to add this to my shader, I go back to my shader nodes, add an attribute node, and then type in the word floor connect the factor value into the mix shader. And you can see I've got the right material on the floor, but if I re-enable large scale displacement, I've got large wavy shapes on my floor. To fix this, I need to create the same mask, but in weight paint mode. Then on my displacement modifier in the vertex group, select that and then hit invert to omit the floor. And in Blender, shaders don't inherit the displacement. So getting the rock floor to inherit the correct displacement means adding a separate mix node just to combine the two displacements controlled by that same mask attribute we created before. And that's it. At this stage, we have enough to create a spooky cave walkthrough if we use fly mode. But to make the camera follow the track realistically, my team created a geometry node setup that simulates gravity and inertia along the curve, which is what gives us that dynamic motion that follows the actual curve without any extra work on keyframe. If you want that setup, just click the link below and you can download it. And this is where the fun begins, because you can now play with the shape of the mine shaft, creating huge drops, tight turns, and quickly iterate to create something that's fun to watch. So, with a little bit of effort and a little bit of creativity, here is the final mineshaft.